Are the cost of collector boxes becoming too high? Is there enough value inside for these products? Hi everyone and welcome back. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for finding me in this nacho cheese universe that we call YouTube. And yes, today is a box opening video by 401 Games. They were nice enough to let me open this product and we get to experience the box openings of collector boxes with none of the risk. That's that funny thing about risk and reward. When you look at collector boxes, and they're probably here to stay at least for a while longer, Ever since Throne of Eldrain, there are players who love and hate this product. The price point turns players off, but the gambler inside of a lot of the players who can afford these products, it, they keep purchasing them. They keep buying them. Maybe not in the droves they used to at the beginning, but they're still buying these products each and every set. And it's making more than enough money for Wizards that they're not going to turn off the taps on this product. It's not going to become like from the Vault series, at least not yet. But never say never to any of these products. Now, when you look at this premium product and the way players and choose to indulge in this product, a lot of players just like watching the box opening videos. No risk, all the reward. You get to watch the video, you get to experience the openings, the excitement that goes along with finding a serialized cars, a full art foil, and let's face it, March of the Machines, this product does have numerous cards that fall in that $10 to $20 range that overall, you get a fairly decent box, you're going to come out ahead. Not to mention the foil extended arts, a serialized card or any of the are big hit cards that can drive those prices higher depending on the version you have. On the other hand though, you can get a bad box and you're going to zero and it hurts everyone involved. You're like, oh, I know that feeling well, guys. It's happened here on the channel. I'm looking at you Baldur's Gate Commander Legends boxes. Remember that? That was brutal opening those boxes and getting no dragons, nothing good. You spent like 400 bucks in a box and you just got slaughtered. Wizards of the Coastal has a lot of fine tuning to find that equilibrium of value versus the cash flow they want, but that's theirs to hash out in the distance. Players themselves decide how they choose to indulge in products like this. Some players buy a single pack, spend the 40 bucks Canadian, just get a pack. Other people buy a box, split with some friends, share the profit margins. Others buy whole boxes or whole cases still. Depending on everyone's price point, they choose to indulge or not indulge in products like this. So in today's video, we're gonna go through this. We'll see how well these boxes do, how much value we can still find in March the Machines as we get ready for new upcoming products. Like, hey, we got Lord of the Rings coming up, Commander Masters down the road, and let's not forget the premium price attached to those products. We'll be testing new levels of players' patience and wallets. And then when we get to Aftermath, we'll see how that all pans out. I, I, I don't think it's gonna go very well. I've seen a lot of downturn and a lot of negativity on that product. so. I think Wizards will probably learn a lesson there, maybe a little bit of a wallet slap. We'll find out. All right, guys, let's get to this video. Slam some comments in the comments section. Let me know how you feel. We're back again for March of the Machines. Don't give up, because here we go. We got to try to find the most expensive cards in here, and then we just give it all back to 401 Games, guys. That's how it goes. Welcome back. I'm your host, MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. March of the Machines, March of Madness, however you want to say it, the set has some excitement. It has a story that people drove into. They said, yep, this is amazing. Reminds me of War of the Spark. Brings me back to the day. And now we get to crack packs and see if we can find the true value that is inside some of these sets. Let me just crack that back away. Up there. There we go. And of course, we're searching for serialized cards. We're looking for Ragavan. We're looking for Elish Norn. We're looking for the Praetors. We got so many cool cards to hunt for that how can it go wrong, right? Well, if we don't get anything, I guess. The only thing I didn't put in here was the uh, kitchen sink and maybe some fetch lands. All right. Thanks again to 401 Games for allowing me to open all these bad boys. Now, you guys know we get a little bit faster as we go along with these videos. I'll be putting the uncommons and commons in one pile just to save some time here. We'll get right to the rares. And man, some of these cards are nice looking artwork. We all know it's true. Others, you're like, meh, it's okay. It's not that great, Mox. Oh, there we go. Starting out, oh, that can go over there. Starting out with Shieldred, the Whispering One. Nice. All right, we'll put that bad boy there. You know what? It's funny. When you see the old ones like that, and you see the new, like, the Apocalypse one, you're like, ah, the Apocalypse is just better for me. I just like it, the lower casting cost. A lot of people feel that way. I know I feel that way. Here we go. All right, we got the uh, Breach the Multiverse. We got Rankle, Finn the Fangbear. Remember good old Finn? 
He was, oh, poison counters. That was insane. Oh, we got, hey, bro. That's like the uh, original artwork there. It's pretty crazy. You see him in that uh, kind of etched uh, etched foil. Remember when that was... Remember when etched foils were like... What was that? I want to say that was uh, Legends. The, the Commander Legends one, right? Because when they first did that, it was kind of crazy to see it all happening. And we're all like blowing our minds. And now you're like, eh. Oh, there we go. Thalia and the Giga -Gig Monster. G -G Giga Monster. And then we got some... Uh, and of course, Ozoloth. I'm not sure about the companion cards. I don't think they really needed to be reprinted, guys. Ikoria is not that old. And they messed up that mechanic anyway. The companion mechanic, they're like, oh, we had to ban it because it was just it was too powerful. Was it? Maybe you guys didn't think this through a little bit. You think maybe that was your problem? That you didn't think it through? Like a lot of the choices Wizards of the Coast makes nowadays. But I gotta be honest, the products are nice. They look like they just, they look nice. That's all I can say. When I see this stuff, I can't help but get a little bit excited. We're hunting for serialized cards. We're looking for Praetors. We're looking for Planeswalkers. It's just all of it. I love it. So thanks again, 401 Games, for letting me open this bad boy stuff. This is this is a cool experience each and every time. And for any of my patrons, if you ever want to open stuff, you, of course, can contact me at the channel. You know how to reach me. And we will... Oh, it's very cool. And we will definitely talk about it, and we'll work something out for you, okay? Remember, for my channel, guys, I do ship it all back free to you wherever you are in the world. So you don't have to worry about the shipping. You just got to worry about the initial cost, which in Canada is not always the cheapest. Although in this case, most times it is 401 games I buy from because they are the cheapest locally usually. Oh, the, hey, Monster Mentor. That's like two Mythics in a row with the Kroxa. That's cool. And we got some Commando Flying Card. And we got some other guys here. Uh, that there's something about, I've seen this one each time. There's something about that art that grabs me. Even that, that the halo foils, can you guys see that? Those halo foils are just beautiful looking. I don't know how they're gonna show through when we actually, um, you know, see them inside of a sleeve, right? I wish there was a way the sleeves could display them better. Maybe they'll develop a sleeve technology that really lets the art pop inside those sets. But until that happens, you know, we're kind of stuck here with what we're using right now. And some of those cards just, you know, they look nice. And they look amazing outside of a sleeve, but in a sleeve, you're just like, eh, Emery the Lock. I remember when Emery was like, everyone thought she was going to be like a be-all, end-all. No, it didn't really work out, did it? I mean, she's legendary. It was great, but it's just not, enough, not enough bang for your buck. That's how it felt. Oh, we got the Phoenix. Oh, there we go. Another Shouldred. Oh, bring it on, man. Shouldred, awesome. We'll put you there. Look at that, right? The true scriptures. The true scriptures very cool card then we got some uh we got a rare some uncommons and we got a rare oh and we got Urbras the hidden i don't like that artwork i don't know what about it it just it doesn't grab me so i just kind of ignore it and say yeah that doesn't exist so we're getting through this box we're what five mythics in we're not doing too shabby if you open these packs on the wrong side you're gonna pay for it though i'll tell you that all of a sudden you realize your hand ain't moving anymore you're like i can't open the pack it's too stiff uh, oh, there we go. We got Azor. There we go. A couple more. And another Monastery Mentor? Really? I don't know. There's something about that. That, that, uh, Shesh, uh, whatever, Purveyor, Perverter of Truth. That card's going to collapse in value. I've seen so many copies in these videos that I'm like, yeah. Wait the 90 days, boys and girls. That card's going to zero, but it'll work great with Shieldred. So have fun with it. It'll be a good time for everyone, except for whoever's playing against you. Oh, there we go. We got, we got fl Flip It. We got Flippity Flip It. And then we got some other cards. I don't really care about the Grave Gardener. That art does not do it for me. The other art, oh my god. There's that one artwork that has that in it. It's gorgeous. I'm definitely going to pick that up just for the artwork. And that's sad to say. I mean, I'm not one to pay more for it. But I know there'd be so many of these hitting the shelves that if you wait long enough, if you're patient, sure. <laughs> With Ragavan, so cool. And then the Fire Song. All right, we are... Eh. On the last pack of the first box, we're going to see where this one leads us. And I, okay, we've got the Reborn, the Fire. Sure. So many Commander cards, man. And I think it's just a way of them fattening up the um, the card pool. Because you're, you're pulling all these extra rares, but they're all from the Commander decks. I don't know. So this one here, we had, what, six? We had 11 Mythics, though. 
including the commander cards. But still, it's 11 Mythics in the first box, guys. That's pretty good. Let's jump down here to our second box right away. Let's hammer into it. 401, thanks again, man. Great stuff. Great stuff to be able to open this much product and be able to experience this firsthand. And I'll tell you right now, the boxes are a pain to open. Just such a pain. Some uncommons, and we got Eska. Oh, oh! Okay, in the etched, that is a good looking card. Wow, guys, can you see that? That is good looking. All right, Ellis Norn, hanging out with us. We gotta move these down, move these over. I made a bit of a mistake when I did the placement of the cards here, so we're gonna move these ones around. That Ellis Norn was good looking. Wow, very nice looking. And you know what? Definitely due for a reprint, so that thing's gonna come down in price. If you own an original, it would still hold on to it. But I think, uh, ah, Commander One, I think you still have um, value in the originals. But the reprint will definitely drag the prices down everywhere a little bit, making it more affordable for players who can wait it out. Wizards has definitely got to find a way to decide when to reprint, like an official schedule. And I don't think they're there yet. I wish they were, but I just don't see it happening, boys and girls. I want them to, though. That's why I keep talking about it, hoping that some Wizards employee is listening and says, yeah. That's a good idea. I don't think we'll get there, but I could hope. Dream and say, come on, you could, you could do that. You guys could do anything if you put your minds to it, which apparently they haven't yet. Oh, the Doomscar Warrior. Transcendent Message. Path of the Schemer. There you go. A couple of uncommons we don't care about. I mean, they're still nice looking. Oh, nice. Foreign Clex in the Halo foil. That See, I want that to show through, and I still don't think it will, but I want that to um, show through in a card sleeve. Right? Is there any card sleeves that do that? I keep wondering this each video, so if someone knows something, put that in the comments section. If you know something I don't know, I'd like to know. You know what? Sharing is caring. Don't, don't keep the information to yourself. you got to share that with everyone. Let, let them know what you think. It's more rares. We got Dax. I don't know why I put them in that pile, but that's okay. There's a lot of rares in that pack. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of rares, but not tons of value. Because all these cards that people think will be, or used to be, especially if you're an old school person like me, in the last like five years, some of these cards have been devalued by reprints. That it's hard to determine. Hey, we got Thalia and the Gigatog. It's hard to determine which ones will actually hold value. Like Finn's going to zero. Right? Finn's... Oh, there you go. Thalia again. Oh, and Kroxa. Okay, nice. That See, that? I'm not fond of that Kroxa, by the way. You guys see that one? It's it's fine. I like the original Kroxa better. He looks far more intimidating uh, on the on the original artwork. It's still fine, but it's just... It doesn't grab me the same way. It doesn't grab me. It doesn't say I must have it, you know? Well, we're about halfway through this box. And I gotta say, value-wise, not bad with the amount of the types of mythics we've had. There's oh, there you go. And flip it. And we got a couple of rares coming in there. Oh my god, that didn't grab it. And like the Dream Den, I remember that used to be a pretty expensive card. Lures of the Dream Den. I remember playing that in arena and stuff and playing it with some friends on the weekends. During when we were supposed probably supposed to be in lockdown, but I don't know. That was crazy times for everyone. Hey, it's Teferi's talent, because he's so talented. And then we got Yargle eating his way through things. And then we got Rowan's talent. Sure, why not? And then Emery the Locklerk, which, I mean, again, the Halo Foil. That Halo Foiling definitely stands out. It does look nice. I'm not going to say it doesn't. But that question remains. After the half year or so, when all these other products come out, when Commander Master starts dominating the landscape... <laughs> I'm sure if you guys just write down the cards you want, you will be able to pick up a lot of these cards for a penny on a dollar. Because money moves on, players won't be thinking about it, and you can just get past it and say, yep, I don't want to wait anymore. I can buy it now because it's cheap, because everyone's looking at Commander Masters or Lord of the Rings. Which, I know those would be awesome sets, don't get me wrong. And 401 Games, I hope you let me open a ton of it. I will bring it back. Because that would be awesome. All right, let's see here. Uh, Herbrask. Okay, we got another Mythic. We've got some nice... How many Finn the Fang Bear are we going to open, man? I feel like I'm opening that guy like every other pack at this point. 
Maybe just because I opened so many packs. You ever think that, Moxman? Maybe. I think I can get some nachos and cheese after this, I'll tell you that. I think I, oh, oh, yeah. I put in my dues on that one. Okay. Freya. Put those there. Couple in common. Oh, see, this this was not a good pack. Wow, that didn't that didn't feel spicy at all. That felt that felt like uh, a plain hamburger from McDonald's that's been left in the heating oven too long. Tastes like cardboard. All right, here we go. Last pack of this video. Good luck to 401 Games. Well, that wasn't a good start. Come on. Nope, we're definitely not looking to. Okay, we got Luria, the War Leader. Sure. And that was all we got from that one, but still, not bad. All right, guys, thanks again for hanging out here on the channel today. I will see you guys for another video. Have an awesome one. And of course, guys, a big shout out and thank you to all the fantastic patrons supporting MTG Moxman each and every day with video content creation. Without their financial support, videos like this just aren't possible. So thanks again, guys. You rock, patrons! Okay, one hint. Legacy patrons. Okay, one hint. Legacy patrons.